Hello and good morning from the GXFS team here. Um, welcome to our last GXFS monthly webinar for the year 2023. Um, we have a, a short meeting today to inform you of the latest information from our project and um, announce some of our activities for January next year. So um, if this is the first time you are joining one of our webinars, um, you are muted, so uh, if you have a question, feel free to use the chat uh, window at the top right corner or the question window, both is fine, to ask your questions. And uh, we will start with a short presentation. I think we will probably only need like 20 minutes and then uh, we can have a Q&A session with you and we really encourage you all to ask your questions. Um, this webinar will be recorded and made available later. So uh, just as a disclaimer for you. And now I think uh, we can get started. So the agenda for today is short and sweet. Um, first, we will have Andreas Weiss, our uh, project lead for Gaia-X, talk about uh, the XFSC implementation phase two and what the state of play is here. He will then also uh, present to you a new public tender that uh, we have launched uh, in the context of the GXFS project for a video conferencing tool based on XFSC components. And then I will tell you a little bit about our upcoming GXFS tech workshop in January. And then we have time for a discussion and Q&A with you all. And of course, please feel free when the question arises to directly put it in the chat box and we can also take questions maybe in between after the the, ex, uh, the explanations by Andreas, if it makes sense. So Andreas, the, the floor is yours. Please feel free. I'm going to, yeah. Thanks a lot, Vivian, and welcome to everybody who's joined here. Yeah, as you know, we had this implementation phase two, uh, which has been uh, finished last year, early last year, um, to promote a set of federation services. And as you are all aware, uh, in between, we had a lot of activities uh, driven by the GAIAX Association to enhance the specification, to extend the model, to build the new trust framework, and also to uh, provide more insights about uh, the idea around labeling and policies and rules, so which is more the governance, governance framework around it. But to some extent, this has also some impact to our uh, code level and especially when it comes to the handling of the trust framework and the technology which has been selected by the association and the working groups uh, in terms of DIP methods, also integration level. And as you're all aware, um, interoperability is a key objective in all these uh, areas. And therefore, we scheduled a second phase of enhancements and also extensions based on the exchange we had with implementation projects. Some of these implementations is, for example, related to uh, um, the need to have not just a B2B view, so meaning not just building federations on an organizational level, but also engage individuals, which is also a key requirement uh, for the healthcare sector, for example, uh, but also for finance sector. And uh, therefore, we made some extensions uh, as well. Now, coming uh, to the to the general approach, so our key objective was nice with revised architectural concepts, as I've just mentioned, uh, also the official Gaia X specification uh, to, to, to be fully connected and uh, the conceptual changes driven by the Gaia X community. This is, as I said, for example, the need to have um, consent managers for individuals to share data where it's not just on the data space level, but also individual data, which can be, as I said, um, individual healthcare information you want to share with a doctor or any other. How to manage these things and of course we are seeing also constraints to deploy individual apps on uh, on smart devices due to compliance and security reason which uh, leads us also to the, the consideration to have uh, a similar functionality out of the cloud where you can do the provisioning 
according to internal security requirements. So this in conjunction with a move to Eclipse with the code repository and additional changes which are outlined here and you see all the URLs. Uh, we have now a set of new lots and winning bidders. Uh, the first lot we scheduled was a trust management infrastructure. So this is a, a core component to do federation in between a multitude of federations. You know, there is also a, a complementary concept driven by the RSBL with the so-called clearing centers. We are more looking in a self-determined way where individual federations can select their own management level to federate with other groups, uh, either other federations or data space initiatives. And this is the train approach. And as its core, it's dealing with DNS sync between domains, uh, which is uh, core internet technology and internet protocols. And uh, here you can do your own trust anchoring. So this is all about the trust management infrastructure and the winning bidder was T-Systems International. Then we had the so-called OCM extensions, um, uh, which is really to enhance the management of different verifiable credential, verifiable presentation mechanism and technologies, also in terms of interoperability, which is then the W stack. Um, these two lots are also uh, driven or tendered to T Systems International. Then we have the a extension, the, which is the Trust Service API, where you can implement individual rules based on the core technologies, uh, uh, verifiable credentials, verifiable presentations, and selected or mutual discussion. Uh, also, in terms of alignment with the new technology, with the new protocols like OpenID Connect for VCs and for VPs. Uh, and uh, this applies also for the notarization service, which has been assigned to ECSEC. And last but not least, the PCM extension, which is the new version of the credential manager for persons, as well as a similar functionality out of the cloud to have a more easy provisioning for individual credentials. And what is really important here is that we, by this activity, we have also a link to the EUDI capabilities uh, where you can link your individual profile with an official governmental ID, which is, of course, a relevant aspect if you want to deal with smart contracts and, and other purposes, also for know your customer or know your person, uh, which is, uh, for example, in the banking sector, a very important part and other regulated. Areas. So all these activities are scheduled uh, the train environment is close to be finished and we have already a scheduled workshop to train or to uh, support you with the knowledge around train, um, which will be already in January and all the rest of the implementations are scheduled by E1. And of course, uh, you will soon see all the commits uh, in the Eclipse repository. Uh, all the contractors are obliged to commit the code regularly in the clip so you can follow it. You can see what's going on here and you probably have early access to intermediate builds uh, as soon as we also clarify the last uh, things we are doing. Some harmonization requirements after the move from the former GitLab to the Eclipse uh, environment also in terms of container registry and other artifacts. So this is in a nutshell what we are doing. And just have a look at the summaries and the details, uh, change requirements, and um, then you are already pretty familiar with what you can expect near term within the next three months. Next slide, please. All right, and now uh, I'm coming to a different story. Um, Probably, if you look at all the discussions uh, initially around Gaia X, it was the establishment of data spaces. Um, and uh, that's okay um, because uh, Gaia X is really related to 
allow the access to data on large scale uh, with uh, appropriate means for data sovereignty. But looking at the Federation services at, at its core, Federation services are intent to build up federations. And there are a multitude of scenarios. And one of these scenarios is, for example, how to manage a video conference framework based on GAIA-X principles and using the core technology as defined by, for example, the And therefore, we scheduled a tender to build up a concept for such a, let me say, federated sovereign video conferencing approach. Uh, we are all aware that later since COVID, the need for such conferencing tools is uh, is huge. And on the other side, we have always um, concerns around data privacy, uh, uh, resilience of such services, and also how to make them use when you have a certain degree of security requirements. And this is all about this tender. And you can apply for this tender until 14th of December, it is not technical implementation so far, just to build up a conceptual model. And I will uh, show you the re core requirements on the next slide. Uh, first of all, when we talk about video conferencing, uh, one of the key concerns and key complaints is a uh, lack of quality of service, especially when we are talking about bandwidth to have a stable and good quality of video conferencing uh, infrastructure. Uh, as you know, we are pretty engaged also in the, in the service offering appearing and internet exchanges, and we have a lot of them in Germany and, and also in cross over Europe and even cross over the world, which are just take care to peer networks and to provide a quality of service and also dedicated routes uh, from an entry point up to a cloud. These are um, areas where uh, it is conceptually pretty easy to provide a quality of service with some uh, requirements exposed around it. And this is where we think we can provide technical for the provision of EU conferencing services systems in different business locations. So it should be still the decentralized federated approach with the usage of sovereign identities, uh, which is a new paradigm, of course, uh, but which opens a lot of new opportunities in terms of entitlement, accreditation, and verification of participants in video services, also with the assignment of, of uh, um, access controls uh, up to voting controls, which can be uh, captured in verifiable credentials and verifiable presentations for individuals or on an organizational level. So this is pretty smart. And therefore, we are using uh, those components which are outlined here. Also using the catalog to provide different types of services uh, in terms of quality requirements, in terms of participant requirements, uh, which typically lead also in different pricing infrastructures and also provisioning uh, environments. Uh, this can be then managed with a catalog service as a description of a generic service in different uh, shapes. Um, and then also uh, how to manage a uh, meeting uh, which is uh, deployed cross over different uh, uh, providers or distributed sites, um, uh, different scaling requirements uh, and also different confidential levels uh, where uh, also the German government I'm pretty sure other governments in other countries have similar approaches here. Um, for the first shot, we are just looking for components who meet the criteria of permissive open source licenses. Of course, for future deployments, uh, there might be a level where you think this is more intellectual property. And for the real provisioning based on this concept, it might be a closed source. But in the beginning, we are really looking for open source licenses not something which is already out of the box as a, as a closed shop. Uh, we request Kubernetes as an as a infrastructure layer to operate such environments. And uh, 
due to the link in the German government, we have also at least a minimum requirement that one of these entities should be deployed on sovereign cloud stack, which is a, a sibling project here in Germany. Um, so this is more or less what we are asking with this tender to provide a concept, to assess, build SWOT metrics and everything, make some deployment uh, considerations, security considerations, how to assess quality and how to uh, uh, reflect also requirement based on this two or in Germany critis. Uh, which are, uh, because we are talking for the usage of video conferences and critical infrastructures as well. So looking at this, um, I want to go to the next slide just to give you a, a simple view. It is, it is not just, it just a, a, a pre-sketch, it's even a part of the tender just to visualize a little bit that we are looking forward to have two different federations. Either they share clusters or they have individual deployments, but at least core federation services are deployed individually by each federation. Uh, each of them are offering video services with appropriate asset descriptions for deployment or instantiation. And uh, at least a sovereign cloud stack should be considered, but of course you can also outline then other deployment scenarios on other technology stacks as long as it is Kubernetes. And, uh, yeah, and then additionally, we are looking forward to design it in conjunction with Internet Exchange direct routing capabilities, where you have direct lines between Federation A and Federation B to guarantee quality of service and also security, because by this you can avoid any routing by unknown parties. Um, and uh, of course, the SSI Federation Trust Framework is one of the conceptual ideas. So this is in the nutshell what we are looking for. You can see this has nothing to do with data spaces, but it's a lot of to do with federation services. Um, so it's, it's a kind of different approach and uh, therefore we would like to build up some knowledge and share the knowledge afterwards. So this, the results of this conceptual uh, um, um, definition will be shared with, with the outside world based on CCBY. All right, that's it from my side. Thanks for your attention. Thanks, Andreas. And uh, now let's look briefly before we start with your questions at the tech workshop that we plan to host in January. So, um, uh, sorry, the slides. Okay, here we go. So, yeah, this is just a call because next week we have our uh, workshop, the fifth one for this year, taking place here in Cologne. And of course, we're already planning the next edition, which will take place on 22nd and 23rd of January in the Mövenpick Hotel in Frankfurt. Uh, it's about a 10 minute walk from the train station. So uh, really yeah, easy to be reached. And um, this workshop will focus on specifically the new train components that uh, Andreas was talking about earlier. So if you're interested to learn more about the train concept and uh, yeah, listen to presentations in this field and also to uh, look at demonstrations and then also to to really look at how to set up a train environment. Um, this will be the workshop for you. We will also um, most likely combine the whole topic with uh, the topic of DNS security and have a few presentations about this as well. So um, this is still a very preliminary agenda. We are currently working um, with the uh, train experts to refine this program. And if you have questions about this, of course, my colleague Laura Shamemiti is your uh, contact person for anything contact re uh, content related. And if you already think this sounds interesting to you and you are available, then please feel free to register already uh, using the QR code at the bottom. So I think um, without further ado, we can start the Q&A phase. So I think I see one question here already. Okay, let's look. Is there any relation between XFSC video conferencing solution and TEMS, Trusted European Media Data Space? Andreas, I think this is a question for you. Right. Not that I'm aware of, so we haven't included it. Uh, and this should be part of this assessment and the conceptual idea to link to other initiatives we are aware about one approach by the European Commission to deliver uh, secure video conferencing options uh, for, for the Commission entities. They spent 
2.4 million euro and the result was not really convincing so far. So, uh, but we should learn from these exercises and how to get this aligned. Um, there, to be honest, there are so much solutions out in the field. So we are not really reinventing the wheel. So the idea of this conceptual approach is what is the best practice for the deployment of video services, but not just on a single stack. So uh, you, you know, we have Jitsi, for example, um, Big Blue Button and a lot of other open source solutions. Uh, why shouldn't we also have a look by using WebRTC clients uh, to interact with both of these video services? We are pretty clear that at least a session must be managed on one technology platform, but how to interact in terms of having seamless user interaction with a huge set of participants uh, to, to, to join jointly uh, such conferences, but the key element here is how to apply SSI infrastructures and verification mechanism to secure the, uh, the, the, the access to such video conferences, to keep transparency of the participants, to have a clear access road scheme uh, or access scheme in terms of role-based access. Uh, so these are the key ideas and, and uh, really to have a preparation for a future, at least proof of concept with real-time scenarios and at a certain point we need also to consider more the user experience than talking about any high-level data space concepts so i think this is a key success factor that you have a huge good user experience one of the requirements is also to link the video conferencing system with um, elements uh, uh, matrix application uh, uh, channels um, which is also one of the approaches by the government to have uh, different options, not just video conferencing, but typical phone interaction without video. So there are a lot of ideas. We already saw a lot of solutions, but we have to bring it into one picture. And the goal and the aim of this conceptual approach, and then have a decision later on to build a POC or to incubate a more large scale initiatives because the demand and the need of such video conferencing are really big. Okay. Thanks, so I will have a look at TMS um, and, and we can follow up on this. If anyone uh, here would prefer to ask a question by speaking out, um, we can, I think, promote you also to uh, speak directly if you prefer. So if someone doesn't really know how to type their question, um, but would rather speak freely, feel free to um, let me know by posting in the chat. Are there any other questions? Okay, I think that looks like there are no other questions. So then I think we can finish early and uh, wrap up. And uh, here, as always, you have the additional resources. We will upload the, I think the, um, the status uh, slides are here in the materials section at the top right button. So you can, uh, so you can download the slides and have a look at, at everything again in, in a bit more detail. Uh, yeah, maybe also to you all, thank you very much for a very successful year 2023. We really um, did a lot of events. We did a lot of these uh, webinars, workshops, uh, blog posts, studies, white papers. So I think um, the output was quite quite a lot this year. Here's also our colleague, Laurescia. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's also a thank you for all of you for engaging with us and uh, hopefully we see many of you at our next events in 2024. We have a lot of workshops in the pipeline for you to really try and have you uh, use the XFSC components uh, in your different projects. And of course, if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us as well. Um, yeah, so this is really a, a thanks to all of you and we wish you a very nice Christmas time, and we hope to see many of you again next year.
Thanks a lot and have a nice weekend. Thank you, Vivian.